6.30 in the morning, no sun yet. Well, it says here we've got 0 amps or 0 0.1 amps now, 100%. Well, the BMS is still in the same position as last night. We've got 110, 109 millivolt deviation. Cell number 11 is still the lowest and 14 still the highest. Nothing has changed. It's still balancing single cells. Nothing has changed. Now you can see the red light, the charger is still running here, but it's only pushing in, well, 100 milliamps, I guess. So this is all not working, at least not at this voltage here. Uh, well, the sun is coming up very soon now. Well, the charge controllers should go into float mode right away because we have reached the voltage already. So my thinking is this morning before having breakfast, uh, if we turn one charge controller off, east roof for example, and just operate the west roof charge controller, so we can easily adjust settings in the charge controller, go up and down with the voltage and change the floating absorption voltage in just one controller at a time, and slowly increase the voltage now to 3.5 per cell, and basically set the absorption voltage the same as the float voltage. So we're keeping the set voltage and increase this slowly in the pack and see what the BMS does. Because it should be more efficient to balance at higher state of charge, at higher voltage, because we're on the steep side of the curve. Just to observe what happens then. Because this is clearly not working here for some reason. The voltage at cell number 11 has actually decreased. The stupid light. Uh, uh, let's give it a go. To start with, I have changed the absorption voltage to 56, which is 3.5 per cell, and the float voltage to 55.9, so just underneath. And I've set the absorption time to zero minutes. So if we hit the 3.5 per cell, we are going slightly under and absorb and stay there forever. And then I want to see what the BMS does at this higher state of charge. But it's early in the morning <laughs> and we've got only 70 volts on the panel. So there's nothing coming in from the solar so far. Okay, let's go inside and have breakfast in this cold winter morning. Can you see that? We've got probably only six, seven degrees or so outside. Freezing cold. So, here is the situation at 8.45. We are in float mode with both charge controllers. Well, by the way, I turned on the east roof controller as well again, so both charge controllers were turned on, but, the, but they had different settings. And this doesn't actually matter because the east roof controller turned off the first because it reached the absorption voltage and then it locked into float mode while the west roof controller still kept charging because I changed the settings to charge to a higher voltage. So this is the only thing which happens then if you have different settings in charge controllers. Nothing breaks and they are not fighting. So now we are at 55.87 volts in the battery. Zero amps going in and out and you can see in the BMS we are balancing. But the balancing is very, very, very slow. And I cannot see that cell number six, for example, is actually coming down. It was on 595 just probably 20 minutes ago, and it is now on 592 while balancing. So there's three millivolts. We are still on 220 millivolt deviation. And because we are not charging anymore, or we are just charging right now, cell number 11 will never catch up because there's no charging current. So only if the higher cells are getting discharged now, the overall voltage of the battery will lower. And then the charge controllers give the battery a little bit of current again to hold this float voltage I've set. But this could take days, weeks, months, years to balance. 
I'll keep monitoring it for a couple of hours and see if we can actually see an increase in voltage for cell number 11 and if cell number 6 is coming down slowly. Okay, it is now 11.30 and uh, this is the result of the balancing I did to the pack. So I increased the voltage in the west roof solar charge controllers to 3.6 volts, floating and absorbing. So all the cells are over 3.6 volts now and we've got a deviation of 11 or 12 millivolt only. So this looks like a very balanced pack now to me. I don't want to charge any higher. I'll leave the battery here for maybe two or three hours or so to let it all balance out. And then we have another look and see what the result is after that time, if we have any drifting again, but it should be fine. Okay, let's have a look at the beast again, how it looks like it is now um, 10 to two. And oh, we've got a deviation of two millivolt only at 3.6 volts. It is still balancing and charging and balancing and charging. I can monitor the situation from inside and I could see sometimes 0 0.1 up to 0 0.5 amps going into the battery and then it discharged the battery again a bit. So it's floating around the 3.6 volt mark. And if the pump kicks in, for example, then we've got a big draw from the battery as well because it's cloudy outside. And um, well, then it gets recharged to 3.6 volts and the cells all come together here um, within three, two millivolts here. That's quite amazing. So I think we are, I would consider this as a very balanced pack. I have one millivolt set as the, oh, we've got one millivolt now. I've got one millivolt set as the um, difference while balancing, which is quite ridiculous, but I just set this to see what's actually going on. All right, okay, so top balancing done, I would say. So the next test would be to discharge the battery a little bit and then wait until it goes up to this stage again and see if the uniformity of the cells is still there. Settings, battery. See, I haven't changed any settings in this controller here at all. It still sits on 55.2 volts. And we turn on the charger. See, and this one sits on 57.6 volts, both absorption and voltage, completely different settings. And this is still working. The East Roof controller will turn off earlier, of course, because the settings are lower. It reaches the voltage and then it shuts, shuts off and this one just keeps charging until this voltage here. Okay, so we turn this one off as well. 57.6, that is uh, 3.6 volts. Okay, let's turn on some load. Okay, we're now pulling 10 amps, roughly 10 amps, 500 watts from the battery. And going back in the BMS now, we've got a voltage difference of 15 millivolt. Okay, enable east roof, enable west roof, back in the BMS. Okay, so, and now we can see the east roof, 166 watts, west roof, 180 watts, 5 amps. Yeah, 5.2 amps going into the battery at the moment. Uh, we'll have a look here inside. We can see the blue lights of both charge controllers. So they are both in bulk mode or absorption mode. No, bulk mode, not absorption mode. Okay, and deviation, 7 millivolt at 3.58. Yeah, 3.58. It looks all very good at the moment. Of course, when you use the battery and discharge it further and keep it between 60-80% a couple of times for a couple of days, weeks, months or whatever, and then you come back to 3.6, it won't be like this anymore. There will be still a drift of all the cells happening then. Some of you have mentioned this under the last videos. So thank you very much for all your input um, with this.
and we are hitting 3.6 the balancing has kicked in at 3.61 and we've got 4 millivolt deviation so we are now recharged and I think we can see yeah, both charge controllers have gone into float mode green light is on there's nothing coming from the solar anymore the battery has completely recharged to 3.6 volts as per settings and we still have only 4 millivolt deviation so this seems to work fine at the moment here but i'm i'm a bit concerned about what happens then because well as you know i've got not enough solar at the moment to charge these batteries even and then there's a second battery coming so there's not enough solar there i won't charge the battery to these high state of charges very often i keep it mostly between i would say 20 and 80 90 percent that's probably everything i do someone mentioned to use the equalization mode in the charge controllers to do a monthly or quarterly maintenance run on the batteries with different settings we can keep our lower voltage settings and everything in the solar charge controllers and keep the batteries to 3.45 and then absorb for example but once a month the equalization would kick in and then charges the battery to 3.6 and balance them all out and then afterwards it goes down to the normal mode 3.45 only this is actually a very very good idea i like this very much battery expert mode see the equalization voltage is disabled here at the moment so i would need to i would need to user defined that is user defined already it's time for two hours but it's disabled I don't know how to enable this one here. I probably need to select a different battery. AGM, lithium iron phosphate, turbular plate traction, whatever that is. I think this is maybe only select preset. AGM cells. If I select the AGM cell, then it will come up. So I need to do something like this. Um, you can create your own presets here, so I need to play around with these functions. Need to be careful, the voltage is far too high now. Okay, so this would be a possibility. I look into this. Very interesting and very helpful comment. Well, this would be an amazing feature, right? If we could automate the equalization and let the battery charge up to a higher state of charge to a higher voltage once a month or every three months only, just to equalize all the cells. That's a ninja trick. Okay, what I will do is I will just reset the west roof controller as well to 55.2, 53.6, everything else. And it will now continue to discharge the battery to a 3. Point, what is it? 3.35 floating voltage. And then we will see what happens in the future. Well, so far the problem is fixed for the moment. And I probably don't need to worry at the moment if the battery gets charged that we will have an over voltage situation again as a couple of videos before when we were off grid here in the off grid garage. How I have achieved that is, well, I have discharged higher cells with the light bulb set up here, just banana plugs onto each cell, which was flagged red in the BMS. And I also used our little power supply now here and I put this on 3.6 volts and then connected this to single cells which were really low and let it charge and absorb. So this was connected for half an hour, hour to cells sometimes. They didn't take much energy at all. It was like 150 milliamps or something per cell, but still it made a difference. It brought them all back to the same level now. And for now, I guess I can just close the lid here. Yeah, they are both on floating until tomorrow. I have another look here, 3.55 now. And the voltage, of course, is going down. Floating voltage is at 3.35. Excellent. <sighs> okay, so what have we learned from this whole situation? Well, everyone, who left comments under the videos saying you cannot balance your battery at these low voltages was of course absolutely correct. 
I was just trying it. I was trying to to do something to to learn and see what happens actually and said, yeah, why? But why is that? Why is it not working? Because of the flat area of the curve you are already in and one millivolt of your cells make already a huge difference in state of charge. And this is not the case at a higher voltage. So here at 3.6, one millivolt doesn't make much difference at all. So. And this is why the balancing is now really effective. So the BMS was able to calibrate all the cells now from about 55 millivolts before now to only one millivolt at 3.6 volt. So that is pretty good. Okay. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching here. Thanks for all your support here on the channel. Thanks for all your beer donations. You are crazy. Well, I can understand this because the winner will get a fridge full of beer. As always, guys, stay charged, stay safe, and we will see us again in the next video coming out very soon here from the Off-Grid Garage in Australia. We've got winter, 5 degrees during the night, 24 during the day. All right, guys, thanks for watching. See you then. Bye-bye.